today I am going to show you how to use a black and white technical drawing, just got simple lines, um, and Photoshop to put fabric backgrounds in spaces to kind of lay out and design the garment before you make it. Um, I am using Photoshop CS6. Um, the tools that we're using are in generally the same place as on most, version of photo, most versions of Photoshop and the Photoshop Cloud, I believe, is the same. So you might need to Google where to find a particular tool if you can't locate it in the same place on your, your version of Photoshop. But in other photo editing software, um, some of them do have these features. But this particular tutorial is specific to CS6. So this is the the dress that I did for a customer and everyone was asking how I did this. We're going to work on a more simple dress just because it's faster and this is all the same process it's just repeating it over and over again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my technical drawing that I want to use and this it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to make sure that all your black lines are connected so that when you select an area, it just selects the area you want. Um, and then I'm also going to drag and drop up here, up not in my um, window that I'm working in, but just up above here in my Photoshop window, and you'll see it'll open each one in an individual tab to use later. And if I come back over here, I can open up my dress again. So the this first page over here, you'll see it'll say index, and that's just kind of your home page background image. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to take and select the magic wand. But one thing you will want to make sure to do is make sure that your image is in um, CMYK color. Sometimes with the RGB color it won't let you um, do some of the things that we want to do. So, um, so I'm going to take, I'm going to select my bodice and I want my sleeves to be the same color so I am holding down my shift key and selecting multiple white areas. I just click in the white area with my magic wand and it just fills in all of it. If your black lines aren't connected it'll t fill in the background as well. Um, and so you need to undo them and then fill the black line in and then go back and do it again. So anyways, after you've selected your area, you're going to come down over here into this corner where it says um, background. And down here at the bottom in our layers panel, um, we have our masking tool. The other two uh, little buttons we're going to be using is our file button and our new layer button. So now that we've selected an area, we're going to hit the file button. Um, and I'm going to name this bodice. And I recommend naming it because if you end up with a couple of different sections, it can get really hard to find the area you want, especially with the um, signature skirt, because I think I ended up having 15 different uh, folders with different layers in them. So um, after you have added your folder, you still have your area up here selected, you're going to come down and there's a little square with a little circle in it. It's the mask button, and it creates a layer mask. And what you'll notice is, is the background on this is all black, and then just the area I've selected is white. And that is what creates the small little area that our colored fabric is going to go into. So um, once you've done that with one, I'm going to make sure I've got my... Oops. I'm going to click on my background again, and, and you have to make sure each time when you want to go back to your main picture that you click on that, otherwise it won't work, because there's nothing but black around here on the other layers. And so I'm going to get my wand, I'm going to select another one, and then I'm going to come back down here, and I'm going to make another group, this is going to be sash, and I'm going to create a mask for that, and again you can see if you look closely, there's white down here, but it's in a different area, and that's because it's the sash. And so, one last layer for this one is I'm going to select the skirt. I'm going to come down to create a file, and I'm going to name it skirt, and create a layer mask. So, 
Now what we need to do is we need to create a layer to actually put the image on um, for each one. So if I click on my bodice file, I can click down on this little page icon and it creates a new layer. So I can do that with all three of them. And you can create more than one layer if you want. Um, and so you can swap back and forth to see which one you like better. But so we're going to start with the bodice, and so I have, I'm up here with the bodice tab, and I'm on the layer that's directly under bodice layer 1. And so I'm going to come over to um, one of my fabric selections, and I'm going to pick a, oops, didn't mean to do that, decide, well, what do I think I'd like to use for the bodice? And so... I'm going to I'm going to try this one and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do control A which selects all um and then control C which copies um and then if I go back to my tech drawing and I make sure I have my layer 1 selected here and if I go control V it'll paste and so now you can see that I've got my fabric in there um, one thing you'll notice is it's really big print because the resolution for my graphic and my fabric were different. So um, if you hit Control T, that's a transform option, which is, I believe, up under edits, and it will cause free transform. But that's how you can manipulate the size. I like to hold Shift down and drag from a corner. That way it keeps any print proportional. So I'm going to shrink it down, and you can see the outline here, so even though it's, I can't see it because it's not up under my bodice, I can still see where it is. Um, and, oops, I had caps lock on that time instead of shift. And then if you need to, you can just kind of slide out and it'll create this little corner arrow. And if you right click with your mouse, you can turn it and adjust it. And see, when I stretched it that way, it kind of distorted the print because it didn't stretch both directions. So when you are happy with where you have your your fabric print at, you can just double click and it will place it there for you. And so then I'm going to do the same by copying. And then this time I'm going to go into my sash and under sash is layer two. I'm going to paste it. Oops, I didn't apparently actually copy. So um, on the purple, I went Control A, which selects all, Control C, which copies, and then when I come back here on layer two and Control V, it'll paste it in. And again, it's huge. So um, Control T, which is the free transform, and then I'll put, hold Shift down before I click on my corner. I'm going to click on the corner of my mouse drag it down and then I'm going to drag my my box up and place it and then I'll just double click and then last but not least I'm going to come over to my other one and I'm going to control A to select all control C to copy and I come back over here I'm going to go down to my skirt and then I want to go down to the layer that's right below it and I will paste it in and then control T to get the free transform option. I'm going to hold shift down. It doesn't matter which corner you drag from, um, especially if you're holding down shift because it all does. So I've got that about as small as I can. Well, let's see, I can rotate it and make it a little bit smaller. It's kind of hard if you have a print that's a really big scale and you're working with a large area. Um, but so then I've got it in where I like it and we'll just double click. And so now I have my entire garment laid out with my different fabrics. If you were to decide, you couldn't decide between um, two different prints for the skirt, for example, what I can do is I can come down up here over in where the skirt mask is and I have one layer and I can actually add another layer with the layer button and um, and come and find the other print that I was debating about and control A to copy control C, or control A to select all control C to copy and then I'm going to come over here and on this new blank layer 4 I'm going to control V to paste and you'll see 
that it just pasted right over the top of what I had there before. And so I'm going to use Control T to transform it and get it down. And so then I can um, look and see, okay, well, do I like this with it or do I like the other one? And what you can do to kind of flip back and forth if you can't decide is you can see both the layers are still here, but because my new layer is on top, it's the one that's showing. So there's two things you can do. Either you can drag layer, the bottom layer up above it, or you can just hit the little eye icon and it makes it disappear. And you can flip back and forth and decide which one you want to use. And the great thing is, is if you click File, Save As, um, if you save it as a PSD file, which is a Photoshop file, it will maintain your layers. So you can come back at any point and open it up and just drop new fabric choices in and design a whole new dress without going through the process of creating all the layers again. So this is Kimmy from Everything Your Mama Made and More. And I hope that you learned something new and that you can use this to help make your design process go even smoother.